appreciate everybody being here. It's um, it's it's good to see everybody and grateful for what you do. Uh, I am first just want to say thank you to Coach Kelly for the opportunity to be here. Uh, I am extremely grateful for the opportunity to be a part of this university, part of this community. I do want to take one second because in the time that we left Notre Dame and have come here, have not had a chance to speak publicly. And I do want to take one second to say thank you to every player back in South Bend. Uh, I had a blast coaching that group. And there are guys that will be friends forever and, and that really worked hard uh, in, our, in our world there. And, and uh, I am extremely grateful for the opportunity to have been with them and, and for what they did. Um, excited about uh, the chance to, to be at LSU and, and to be a fighting tiger and, and experience uh, life in the SEC and, and life in the SEC West uh, specifically. Excited about the challenge of, of recruiting. While we're on the, the, the topic of recruiting, again, have not had the chance to be out publicly. So many people on this campus helped us put this class together in what was really a dead sprint from the time that, that we arrived in, in mid to early December uh, in terms of our compliance people, um, people on campus that helped us organize visits. I mean, we were learning on the fly. Um, all, all the different facets of, of the athletic department, the university administration, admissions, there are too many people to name specifically, but we do want to recognize all the help that came from outside of the football operations center as it related to putting this class together. And then specifically inside the, the football operations center, we do need to recognize Will Redmond and J.R. Belton and the job that they did to help put this class together. Um, the, the last thing before I take any questions, um, I've tried really hard to uh, just get indoctrinated <laughs> into the community. And uh, I did not realize how rabid, uh, rabid the fan base was until I put a tweet out in an airport that said, hey, Tiger fans, you know, tell me what I should do. And about 400,000 people <laughs> interacted with that thing. And um, it's been really, really cool the, the, the way that the, the fans and people in the local community have, have reached out. And we are slowly checking all the suggestions off the box one by one. Um, the Cajun turkey sandwich at the AM Mart is uh, as advertised. Got a lot of suggestions on that one. Went over and saw Coach Johnson the other day uh, on Sunday uh, at the box. He and I have a relationship dating back to our, our time at Nevada. And, and so to experience that was wild. I thought it was great. And everybody was like, well, it's just it's the season opener against Maine. Wait till we get SEC opponents in here. So we're excited about that too. Having been to uh, a couple basketball games, need to get to a women's game, need to get to a gymnastics meet, just trying to do the things on campus and in the community to try and get involved and, and grateful for all the people that have embraced us and will continue to do so as the families arrive. So with that, I'll take any questions. Coach Charles Sandegriff, ESPN Radio, up here. Um, with one class uh, in the book since the uh, rule changed, how would you describe the challenges of recruiting with regards to NIL? In regards to NIL, uh, it's, it's difficult because it's a moving target. Uh, it is interpreted different ways in different states, and you're constantly um, – trying to educate people as to why what one school can do and other school may not be able to do. It's just hard to hit a moving target. Um, in the end, I don't think NIL was the deciding factor in very many cases uh, in recruiting, but um, I know that Coach Kelly, our administration, our community, I know that they are uh, as NIL continues to develop and form that we are going to stay on the, the front end of it and, and do so um, responsibly. But um, that is, uh, that's a challenge for anybody right now just because there are very few guidelines and, and the rules apply differently in each state. So um, that was something that uh, we were dealing with on the fly. I 
I don't have enough uh, information as it how it works to everywhere else to be able to give a um, a fair statement on that. Uh, I mean, it's obviously it's all still in the process. If I understand correctly, I believe that one law that had passed in the state of Alabama has already been repealed. Is that correct? That happened in the last day or so, or at least was put up for debate. Like these things keep moving. So how we function here and does it put it put us at a competitive advantage or disadvantage as it relates to other opponents? I don't think I could answer that right now. Hey, Coach, uh, Jacques Doucet, WAP TV in Baton Rouge. Um, how are you and Frank Wilson going to work together, and what kind of asset is he for you in the recruiting here in Louisiana? There's no doubt that Coach Wilson is, is going to be a, a strong asset uh, as it relates to the recruiting operation, and we are going to lean on his expertise in the state. I certainly don't accept the role of recruiting coordinator and come in and act as though I understand fully the landscape in the state, the relationships, uh, all the history. Uh, that's not my strong suit. We're going to we're going to lean on Coach Wilson and Coach Sloan and and Coach Hankins and uh, Hankton, excuse me, all the guys that know the state really well. I'm going to focus on on what I do well, which is roster building and and um, player evaluation and keeping the offense and the defense communicating with one another. And really my job is to ensure Coach Kelly's vision of recruiting. I, I think my experience as a head coach and as a special teams coordinator helps those things because I see the big picture. I'm not focused on one side of the ball or one position group. I, I'm trying to constantly see the big picture, not only for where we're at now, but where we need to be in the future. So uh, as it relates to leaning on Coach Wilson, he's going to be a gigantic resource, and we work hand in hand on a lot of things, and there's a couple times a day I'm knocking on that door seeking his advice. Brian, Scott Rappelet from The Advocate. Um, along with the NIL transfer portal, because it's become so prevalent, was, was that a for for a, a group that, as you said, had to hit the ground running in terms of recruiting, mm -hmm. was that a, was that a help this year? Was it particularly helpful? To this oh, platform? there's no doubt that it helped us rebuild the roster. I mean, when you look at the bowl game, I think we were at 39 or 40 scholarship players available for the bowl game. We couldn't move forward like that, and and there are limitations as to you know how many initials that you can invite into a class, and we had to be judicious about. Uh, how many of those guys were going to be transfer players that might offer more immediate help? How many of those transfer players had eligibility remaining? We, we could not uh, take a, a huge number of guys that only had a year left because then the roster was going to get top-heavy and, and we were going to uh, face different issues coming down the road. So that was, that was difficult. And to be honest with you, I kind of leaned on my father, Bill Polian, my brother Chris, who – I mean, they've got plenty of experience in how to approach free agency. And let's not mistake it, for lack of a better term, that's what the transfer portal is. It's a one, you're a one-time free agent. So we had to be responsible in, in how we handled that and, and feel like with Coach Kelly's guidance and the work of all the people in the football operations center that we did a, we did a really good job, in, but we did a responsible job as well. Uh, here on the right, Shay Dixon with 24-7 Sports. Um, in terms of the transfer portal and rebuilding the roster, how do you think y'all did in terms of addressing need positions across the board and with, I guess, a handful of scholarships still left, are there spots you're looking at or is that something you determine through spring ball and as the offseason goes? No, there are still there are still initial scholarships available and Coach Kelly and, and myself and the, the coordinators and Coach Wilson will talk through those needs and, and, and determine – if investment in another transfer might be uh, in the best interest of our program, um, you know, it, it's a it's a tricky deal, and and you you have to manage it. Um, you know, you got to manage it wisely, and and we we've we've tried to do that uh, as best we can here moving forward. Hey, Brian. Uh, Michael Cobble from Channel 2 here in Baton Rouge. If I may recommend Parans, if you like seafood. Yes, it's on the list. It's a good um, Coach House. 
He went there and raved about it. We, yeah. we trade notes in the office. Good, good, good spot. Uh, let's talk about special teams for a minute. Obviously, school just lost their, one of their best kickers ever in all three different kicking positions. It looks like you guys could have you know, some need, I guess. Uh, how much do you know about those positions? How anxious are you to work with the guys you have? Very excited to, to, um, to work with the guys that are here. Tried to talk Caden to coming back. Gave it one shot. Didn't work. <laughs> and wish him nothing but the best. He's, he's immensely talented. Um, very excited to work with the specialists in particular, and we'll work with them every day, and I think there's talent there. And, you know, we, we've, we've signed Jay Bramblett to, to join us, to, to augment us, and, and uh, we'll be excited to, to reunite with Jay here in the summertime. But one of the beauties of being the special teams coordinator is that you get to work with the entire cross-section of the team. And the, the last probably five to seven days, the, the analyst I'm working with, Lester Erb, he and I have spent a lot of time watching LSU film, uh, getting to know our guys, uh, and, and excited about what we saw on film. And, and we need to um, re-energize re a culture here where, where guys understand that our best players have to cover kicks. I mean... My job is made easier because Coach Kelly believes in the importance of the kicking game, and it starts with him, and that will bleed down through the rest of the the, uh, the organization, the coaching staff, the players, and and we're going to get uh, as many guys involved as po as possible, and 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 continue to try and play at a high level in the third phase of the game, and. You watch throughout the course of the college football playoffs, the bowl season, the NFL playoffs. Um, it's important. It's important that you 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 uh, function at a high level in the kicking game, and we're going to continue to do that. Good. Thanks, guys.